for around 5 o'clock in the morning right now. As you already see, we are ready to go. It used to be roughly about 25 balloons in the morning and it will be packed. But given the situation, there's only 4 balloons right now. And uh, which just shows uh, the crisis here in Egypt in terms of tourism industry and is dependent on it. The early balloon ride gives you a chance to see the breathtaking sunrise. And this is really nice. That's the Valley of the Queens. And they can come over. As you can see the Valley of the Kings over right there. And what we're going to expect to see is the sunrise from here, which is going to be pretty spectacu uh, spectac uh, spectacular. You can see the sun on that side. And you can see the moon. And you can also see the moon on the other side, right there. It's cheaper if you buy it from the local hotels and travel agencies, but make sure to bargain to get the best price. It includes a ride from your hotel. Um, one of the things that's really interesting is that the driver intentionally fly low to give us a nice feeling of hovering. So if you can come over and take a look, you can see how spectacular that is. The name Laxor means palaces and frequently being characterized as world's largest open-air museum. As the ruins of the temple complex at the Calarac and Laxor stand within the modern city. The public ferry is the most inexpensive way to get between West and the East Bank, and the bicycle is recommended for getting around Laxor. The rental is only $2 a day. This is a great way to avoid hustlers, but it's also possible to get around the city by foot. However, being warned, it can be really hot at noon. We'll begin our day from the East Bank by visiting the Laxor Temple located near the ferry dock. Remember, always bring your student card to get 50% off on missions. It is a large ancient Egyptian temple complex constructed approximately 1400 BC from sandstone located at southwestern Egypt. Unlike other temples, Lexor Temple is not dedicated to a cult god or defined version of king in death. Instead, the temple is dedicated to rejuvenation of kingship. It may have been where many of the kings of Egypt were crowned. My final stop in the East Bank is the Calarac or Calarac Temple Complex. It comprises a vast mix of decayed temples, chapels, pylons, and other buildings. Behind me is the Temple of Calarac. It's actually made out of different uh, temples and it's the world's second largest religious site. It's really, really big and actually they even have its own lake. The Calarac complex got its name from the nearby partially surrounded modern village of Al Calarac, about 2.5 kilometers north of Lexor. The construction of Calarac began during the Middle Kingdom and continued to Paramaric period. Although most of the building dated from the New Kingdom, the area was a main place of worship during the 18th dynasty Theban Triad with the god Amun at its head. However, some believe Calarac was also a high precision ancient observatory. Temples all together is world's largest, largest religious site. Hello. And sometimes it's really hard to focus on filming when you got lots of Egyptian fans wanting a photo with you. No, 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 no
Bye bye. So All right. So we're not away. And amazement of local guys that speaks perfect Chinese. By the way, the ferry runs every 10 minutes from 6 in the morning to 10 at night. It's only about 50 cents and you're able to bring your bike on board. Ignore anyone who's telling you the ferry is not running. They just want to offer you the more expensive water taxi. Near the ferry docks, there's a lot of street vendors offering local snacks. So make sure to support the people of Egypt, especially during this difficult time. I'm a falafel addict, so 20 cents each is going to be pretty hard for me to lose weight. Another local favorite only costs 50 cents. It's called Felia, a flaky pastry, freshly baked and topped with spices and oil. Thank you, super long. Bye bye. Bye bye. For those of you who fully need to fill up, Let's eat some local food. Don't worry, we'll to keep the cost down. For only 75 cents, you can enjoy macaron al forno, which translates into oven baked pasta. All right, I'm heading off to the Valley of the Kings. West Bank is more of an archaeological paradise, consisting of string of mortuary temples. Most of them are allocated along the same road. So let's bike to the furthest, the Valley of the Kings. Alternatively, you can reach it by a mini bus for about $2 each way. The Valley of the Kings is a nickname for the Theban Hills. It consists of tombs that were constructed for the pharaoh and the powerful nobles of the New Kingdom for a period of nearly 500 years, from 16th to 11th century BC. Our next stop is Mortuary Temple of Hatshepsut. It's constructed of limestones located beneath the cliff of El Bahari. Now, I just finished uh, visiting the Valley of Kings, and unlike Abu Simbel, I don't have a filming permit there, and we're going to respect the fact that we can't film inside the Valley of the Kings. Now, However, this is, uh, we don't need filming permits to film here. It's a Zipsu temple, which is one of the best preserved uh, temples in Egypt. Uh, however, interior, that's another story. So let's go and check it out. The temple was built for the great queen Hatshepsut during the 18th dynasties to commemorate her achievement and to serve as a funerary temple for her, as well as a century of God, Amen Rod. The main and axis of temple is set to the azimuth of about 116.5 degrees and is aligned to the winter solstice sunrise, which in our modern era occurs on the 21st or the 22nd of December each year. Hazipsu's temple is considered the closest Egypt come to classical architecture and representative of the New Kingdom's funerary architecture. It both grandizes the pharaoh and includes sanctuary to honor the god relevant to their afterlife. One of the things I love about Laxor is there's countless ancient treasures out in the open. But once again, it's sad to see the state of Egypt's important tourist sector. When they say that tourism really dried up, it really is sad because normally this time there should be lots of tour bus and so on. But unfortunately right now, I haven't, I didn't, I'm not seeing anyone. So let's go and have a look to see what's up there. Just absolutely closes down and uh, if you look around, it's just almost like a ghost town. It's literally a ghost town. So therefore, I urge all of you to support the remaining local businesses that are still open and most likely struggling. The stop is the Valley of the Queens. Near the junction on the way back to Laxor, there's also the Valley of the Queens, but our limited time does not allow us to enter the site. You will also pass by Colossia Memnons, two massive stone statues of Pharaoh the Amnon Hotep III, built in 1350 BC. The statues are made from the blocks of sandstone transported from the near modern city of Cairo. The original function of Colossi was the stand guard at the entrance of Amnon Hotep's memorial temple. I recommend you visit this site last since it's open 24 hours. Not everything here in Lexor costs money and certainly this is one of the free attractions you can come to. It's not much to see, but it's free. 
I really love my hotel and before leaving for the airport, I asked my favorite question to the owners. Why should people consider visiting their city? Because it contains some of the greatest wonders in the world. And the beautiful monuments. This is the famous mountain of all the king of the Valley of the King and Hatshepsut. This is what you can see from up here. The most inexpensive transport between Cairo and Luxor is by bus behind the Luxor Temple. There's also overnight trains. Once again, due to the, my pack filming schedule, I decided to take a short flight. So, the most inexpensive way to do this is by taking a ferry to the East Bank and take a taxi directly from the docks. Ignore all the hustlers and go directly to the taxi stand. Always bargain hard directly with the driver.